decided to make a video um, that maybe a lot of you guys might um, relate to. Um, I think that it probably applies to people from all kinds of walks of life through the whole uh, demographic spectrum of people out there, middle class, upper middle class, you know, blue collar, white collar, professionals to um, trade, police officers, dentists, professors, business managers, upper managers, middle managers, the whole nine yards. And it's got to do with, um, well, it presents itself through many faces in society, as we all get a hint of eventually. And one of the more sort of obvious uh, ways that it interacts with you is through these lodges and um, ma yeah, Masonic lodges. Most people will know what I'm talking about when I say Masonic lodges. They present themselves as initially as a social gathering of pe like-minded people. It's very rational to partake, you know, nothing wrong there. Um, I didn't see much reason to get so personally involved with these people at all. I mean, I have my social preferences with people and I'm independent enough to take care of myself. Uh, so I never felt the need. I don't. I mean, I don't run little, a little business where I need the connections yet, anyways. Um, however, um, they seem to want you to know that they're around one way or the other. And um, before I knew it, a lot of my friends around my age that uh, they would also share and talk about how they were being invited to like lodge gatherings and stuff like that and and of course some guy would show up with a funny looking ring and like hey you know at the coffee machine and kind of make sure your eye caught the ring and he'd be like hey um ever thought about joining a lodge you know and um I don't really know what all these people end up saying, yeah or no, or, but some of my friends just told me that they ran into it and at the time they didn't think much about it, so nothing more happened. Uh, I noticed that they were trying to get my attention also. Um, at the time I was not uh, Christian and I didn't know what to make of it, I mean, I just figured I didn't need it. Uh, but they were always like, hey, you know, it's uh, good to get to network, it's good to share ideas. And it's just a good place to meet like-minded people and, you know, the world is kind of turbulent, so let's get together and kind of make a fraternity and look after each other. And you swear an oath of brotherhood not to, not to go against them or something like that, you know, it's... It's it's like gang. <laughs> no, I'm just messing around. I'm, I'm, I don't, I don't want to like you know paint them in a negative light beyond what I experienced. It you know, but it probably makes a lot of sense. I can understand why people are very 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 um, willing to join. I mean, it's kind of like it starts off like in fraternities back in college, right? And anyhow. Um, before you know it, I start kind of bumping into a few of these people. I more or less kind of like acquaintances types. And they share a lot of what they're interested in. And um, If I'm looking down a lot, I apologize. It's because I'm looking at some notes just to make sure I, I kind of cover all the, all, the, all the hot topics. But... Um, Something about them wasn't really appealing to me. I mean, I was on my own path, and I liked my path. And I liked my social friends, and I've always been confident in, in 
that I'll have my life sorted out uh, all on my own. I don't need other people to look after me and stuff like that. Anyways, maybe I'm just a bit self-assured. What kind of I didn't like immediately about what I was bumping into with this group is that they would analyze in me that I like philosophy and I, I, I mean, I would, I had a lot of like religious critique and stuff like that. I was, after all, uh, you know, I guess a Buddhist, you can say, with a lot of critique for a creator god theory and things like that. And they kind of shared the same, but in their own way, because um, they, they're sat I mean, at, at a certain level of influence, once you reach above the street level of these guys, when you get into like the inner workings, they don't deny that they're Satanists. As a matter of fact, they they kind of flaunt it. Um, they have many words for it, like left hand path. Um, and uh, temple is set, blah blah blah. All these weird things are thrown out, and it's like, okay, what the heck is that? And they give you little hints, and they give you little like, you know, wink winks, and and it's like really strange. And then you start looking it up online, and you're like, eh, I'm just not really that much into that stuff. Uh, I mean, first of all, I have a hard time believing in like Jesus Christ and God. So why in the world would I believe in like Satan? It just seems ridiculous, right? I mean, you go from kind of like one thing that's sort of weird in my mind to like the third end of the weird stuff, right? So no thanks. But that seems to kind of like rub them the wrong way. And it's maybe because they actually knew more than I did at the time. I, I mean, now retrospect being, or I mean, hindsight being 2020, I can see that they're actually correct. I was the arrogant one to assume that the Judeo-Christian canon or the Abrahamic God wasn't, but the truth is, it is. And I was like, oh, Buddha and Buddhist cosmology and blah, 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 and multiple reincarnations and uh, wrong. <laughs> Anyways. So, of course, the, the timing between me talking to them and them talking to me was all weird. And I was like, nah, I'm definitely not into that. And they would keep talking about, like, you know, John Milton's Paradise Lost and the way... And it, for y'all that um, aren't familiar with that, that's basically like a very sort of pro-Lucifer narration for the Satan... Lucifer getting kicked out of heaven and, like, Adam's struggle to sort of meet God's demands post being kicked out of Eden and uh, halfway I mean I don't think you need to read a whole lot of the book before you basically realize that they're kind of silently trying to make Lucifer sound like the champion it's like giving the hero's arc of Gilgamesh and super and juxtaposing that on Lucifer and it's like yo the guy's a tool bag what the freak you know and before you know it, they're always talking about like, I mean, you know, for example, they're like, oh, left hand path, what's left hand path? That's the whole thing. Oh, that's like, it's all about this philosophy of going and doing exactly the things that just like sound totally wrong to you, right? So it's like, if your thing is like not killing anything, then maybe at a left hand path gathering, you'll just choke a squirrel to death or something yay because now you like advance through breaking through like discomfort zones it's like okay <laughs> how about going and punching a grandma how how left hand path is that you know um so i, I just didn't I, it didn't it didn't appeal to me at all and, and they have like all these books on like spell casting and like black magic white magic all to suit your personal vibes and it's like and I'd be like what, what's white magic for example what is that and it's like first of all they kind of teach you the technique right and it's all this ritualistic stuff of course it's like in my eyes it's like neo-babylonian mystery religion you know it's paganism on high neo-paganism plus plus the whole thing. I mean, if I was to call it neo-paganism, they'd probably look at me like this and say, you imbecile, it's way beyond, you know? But, um, 
and white magic would be like, oh, it's like using magic and energy and getting other beings to do your bidding and favors, but it's not. It's by like not hurting people. It's like my light is white and it's there to like, you know, help people. And then I was like, so what the heck is black magic? <laughs> and they're like, oh yeah, that, that's when it's like, you know, stealing energy from others, stealing good luck from another, making it apply to you.